Hello children and welcome to this week's Sunday Club. Today we are going to learn the secret to be happy no matter what. We are going to praise the Lord. We are going to thank God for the things he has done for us. Sing with me. Lord, you are awesome. Lord, you are awesome. If it wasn't for your love, if it wasn't for your grace, I don't know where I would be without you. If it wasn't for your love, if it wasn't for your grace, I don't know where I would be without you. Lord, you are awesome. Lord, you are awesome. If it wasn't for your love, if it wasn't for your grace, I don't know where I would be without you. If it wasn't for your love, if it wasn't for your grace, I don't know where I would be without you. So, we say thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. We say thank you for the things you have done. And we say children welcome to craft with auntie jenny so this week we're going to make a burning bush so you're going to need some scissors and some tape or some glue some red pieces of paper that can be tissue paper or old serviettes whatever some twigs from your garden or from outside from the trees with the branches that have just fallen and you're going to need a piece of paper okay ready let's go so if you've got coloured piece of A4 paper, that can be a um, red piece or pink or orange or any colour really and you can colour it in a bit more. Um, the first thing you need to do is you need to fold it in half like this and then you need to cut out some fire shapes on one side. Then what you need to do is you need to fold it up again so you've got like a middle bit you can see that then what we're going to do is we're going to take our bits of twig that we've collected and we're going to stick them oops there we go so i'm using sellotape because i find that easier you can use whatever you want if you want to use glue or tape whatever's easiest and we're going to stick them in there we go stick another one down and just get that end one stuck down this end couple there we go then next we're going to create some more flames so I have got this 
some old wrapping paper. And we're going to just cut out some flame shapes. You might want to get your mum or dad to help you with this, or maybe an older brother or sister, somebody that's okay to use the scissors. And then once we've done this, again, we're going to take the wand to create the fire. This will make our burning bush more burning. Right, I'm going to keep going with that. I'm sure you can get the idea and then I'll show you the end result in a minute. So children, this is our finished burning bush. But as you know from the burning bush, the, burning, the bush didn't actually burn. So you can lift this down and you still have your bush without any burns on it. And you pop it back up and there is your burning bush. If you don't have coloured paper, you can always use felt tip pens or colouring pens or crayons to colour in your burning bush and make it look like a fire. Today we're going to continue with the story of Moses. Now Moses has had an adventure, he's back from Egypt with his brother Aaron and he's spoken to the elders of Israel and now he goes to Pharaoh to give the message that he should let the people of Israel go. Now, when he told Pharaoh that God has said that the people of Israel should be allowed to go, Pharaoh said no. And when Pharaoh said no, Moses warned Pharaoh that there will be consequences, and the consequences were there will be plague. And the first plague was a plague of blood all over the Nile, turned into blood and all the fish died. Pharaoh begged Moses to remove the, to change it back and he did but then Pharaoh did not let Moses go. The next they had a plague of frogs, there were frogs everywhere, frogs in the houses, frogs in the pans, frogs in the pots, frogs in the bed and it was disgusting but Pharaoh was still not ready to let the people go. Then there was a plague of lice. Everybody had lice all over their head, all over their body, animals, and it was awful. They were very itchy. But Pharaoh still did not let the people of Israel go. And that wasn't enough. God sent the plague on all the cattle and animals. They died. They were dying everywhere. The as soon as he hit them, Pharaoh would beg Moses to let that he will let the people go. But then he still didn't let them go. Then Pharaoh did not know how to obey God. He had a heart of heart and he did not let the people go. So God sent a plague of boils on the people of Israel. And the people of Israel, every single one of them had boils in their body, was swollen, it was full of blisters, it was all red and big. But he still did not let the people go. But he begged Moses to remove the boils and he would let the men go and worship their God. Moses said, no, God wants everybody, all the Hebrews, every single person, man and woman and children, to go and worship him. So... Pharaoh thought, okay, I will let your people go if you let the boils go. So the boils went. Pharaoh did not change his mind. He became even more vicious and angry, and he did not let the people go. From there, the next plague came, which was the seventh plague, the plague of hailstones. There were big, giant boulders of hailstones coming from the sky and everywhere, on top of everybody in Egypt. But the people of Goshen, where the Hebrews stayed, there was no hailstones. And these big, gigantic hailstones killed people, destroyed houses, killed, destroyed trees. And Pharaoh begged Moses and said, okay, I will let the men go, but all the women must stay behind. And they can, the men can go and worship God. Moses said, no, God wants everybody to go. And you have to let everybody go. But again, Pharaoh said, no, he would not. 
So God sent him a plague of locusts. And locusts really love eating green things and plants. So the locusts came in the morning and by afternoon they had eaten everything. All the green plants, all the greenery, vegetables, they ate it all. And Pharaoh begged Moses to stop and said, look, this time I'll let you, um, the men take some cattle, some goats and some sheep to go and worship God. But not everybody else. No, Moses said, no, God wants everybody to go and worship him. They will need their cattle, their men and their women and the children. Everybody needs to go because they will need the cattle to worship God. Right, and despite all these negotiations, Pharaoh still did not change his mind. Then, a plague of darkness, the ninth plague. This was the number, number nine plague, nine. And there was darkness in the land for three whole days. But you know what? By the third day, Pharaoh got worried and said okay 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 i'll let the people go just let the day come back and god moses prayed once again as he has always done in the past to god and the day came and then again once more pharaoh changed his mind do you believe that he changed his mind when he did this moses warned pharaoh and said look the next plague is going to be more deadly more serious than any other plague you've had before so watch out and so Pharaoh is going to be the death of all the firstborns of Egypt. Now, tell Moses, tell the Hebrews to kill a lamb and have it for their dinner, but they must take the blood and put it on the doorpost at the top and the side, so that when the angel of death comes to take the firstborn sons, all the Hebrew children will be saved. All the Hebrew firstborns will be saved. And Moses told the Hebrews, and they did that, and they were ready. And that night came, there was huge wailing and crying in the land of Egypt. All the first son, born sons of everybody from the Pharaoh to the lowest servant died. Even the firstborn of cattle, they all died. But there was no death in the Hebrew, like in the Hebrew area of Egypt, the Goshen area, no death at all. This really, really upset Pharaoh and he got furious and said, Get out, get out of Egypt, all you Hebrews. And while they were going, God asked the Hebrews to ask the Egyptians for all gold and silver to worship their God. And you know what? They gave them loads of gold, loads of silver, while they went to worship their God. And the people of Hebrew walked out of Egypt. Hello. You've been hearing of Auntie Boss's story about Moses and how he had several things from God to tell him that he was the person to go back to Egypt. One of those was a, his staff turning into a snake. So today we're going to show you how to make bubble snakes. So what you need, you need a bottle, a craft knife, which is going to be used by an adult. I don't want people saying they cut their fingers off. Some washing up liquid. If you've got it, a little bit of glycerine, but it's not altogether necessary. An elastic band and a flannel. So, the first thing we do is to cut the bottom off the bottle. As I say, this has got to be done by an adult. So, there we go, that's the bottle. Now we're going to make up our bubble mixture. So to do that, we need something to put it in, a dish or um, something like that. And we take three spoonfuls of washing up liquid and about 800 mils of water. This hasn't got to be exact, you can try and make it how you like. You might find you have to experiment and add a little bit more washing up liquid or a little more water, depending. You need to pour it in quite gently and it's good to add a little bit of glycerol just to make the mixture a little more only a few mils of that. Now what you have to do is leave it for 24 hours to settle, otherwise it doesn't work very well. So, in true Blue Peter fashion, and if you don't understand that one, ask your parents or an adult. Here's one I made earlier. 
So that's my bubble mixture. Now what we have to do now is simply put the flannel on the bottom of the bottle, secure it with an elastic band, and very carefully you dip the end into the bubble mixture, let it water drain off a bit, and then hopefully when we blow it, are you ready? We have bubble snakes. If you want to make coloured snakes, you can add, add a, li a little drop of food colouring to the flannel. You can see I'm just putting a little drop on. I'm going to add some red on this side. And we try it again. And you get coloured snakes. I hope you have fun doing it. Gosh, the story, reading the story about Moses is, is a bit exciting. Don't you think? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Interesting to think that last week we looked at him, you know, living in Egypt as a prince, committed this terrible crime, had to run away to Midian, and thinking, probably thinking, you know, well, that's it, you know. Spending, what, 40 years? Yeah, 40 years. I mean, that would make him around about 80 at the time. And at 80 in these days, you're winding down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that just goes to show that, you know, the Lord has different plans for you. Even Indeed. at the age of 80, you'll never know. Yeah, indeed. You're never too old and you're never too young. At 80, Moses, his mission is starting. And God is now sending him back into Egypt. Must be scary as well. Oh, yeah, have you ever heard the saying? Never burn your bridges behind you. <laughs> because you might just need to cross over that same bridge to head back in the other direction. But in this particular instance, he's not going alone. He's going with his brother, Aaron, and also under the guidance of the Almighty One. Most importantly. So, shall we pray? Yeah, let us pray. Father, we thank you that yeah, as we go through varying stages in our lives, Father, that the plans that you have set out for us, you still have them. And sometimes, you know, it might seem as if nothing's happening and we have to be waiting. And that is usually the time when you're preparing us to do your will. Father, we ask, Lord God, that you will help us to be patient and to be listening for you and trusting your guidance and just knowing that the plans that you have for us, you will still bring them through. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Bye, see you next week.